You guys, this is going to be such a special show. I'm just so excited for this day, man. It's another Christmas morning. Merry Christmas. I'm John O'Wells. You're watching Modular World. And today, the Spotlight series continues with Itai. This is going to be so great. Um, I look in the chat. I see great friends. And just thanks for being here, everybody. I just can't name you all. I'm going to. I've greeted Kako and Itai. Itai's there, Mono Scene's there, um, Jan Lavot, Ice Locust, Malarkey, Mono Scenes, FX Music, that's a new name, Stinky Weasel, Matt Shapiro, Somber Lux is here, Air Grid representing, thank you, Ice Locust, SR Wilson, our Pulsar brother, we've been talking, man, this guy makes the killer Pulsar videos, unbelievable, everyone's here, it's great, um, so there's just so much to say, but you know what? I'm going to wait for Itai to talk about all the good stuff. And so the drummer uh, who plays with Itai on this great project, Asaf Spectre, he and Itai made this great short documentary that we're going to start off with. It's a great intro to the show, and uh, you're going to love this. All right? We'll come back with Itai in just a minute. My name is Itai, and I'm a modular synth artist based in upstate New York. It's pronounced Itai. It's basically my name with some additional letters. I grew up on punk rock and rock and roll, but after burning out as a frontman of a touring band, I kind of put my music on hold for a while until I discovered modular synthesis, which opened up a whole new world for me. Modular synthesis became kind of an obsession. I really enjoyed creating this grimy, sludgy sound and not having to do that in front of a screen. Completely disconnecting, not having any kind of distraction. Modular synth is more like an instrument. It's akin to a guitar, but with wires and knobs and endless amounts of combinations of routing and patching. That's really inspiring. And I think that's what drew me into it. I had this crazy idea to build lights that would be massive. So I experimented a bit with what that might look like. And I built a few lights using some LED strips and Arduinos and hacked my way into programming to route CV signal into those lights to have that as a focal point. And in a way, a digital stage that allowed me to be almost like a silhouette rather than the subject. That I was almost inside of the modular synthesizer. always been focused on songwriting as a form of expression. Even though endless amount of tinkering with modular synth, I always felt like it was a goal to create a story, a song, out of those experiments.
in 2020, I released my full-length album, Zeros and Twos, on Truth Table Records. I remember getting the masters in March, right as the pandemic hit, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. So I took a pause, but it was really the modular synth communities that allowed me to find that belonging. And I started performing live online through those communities. It really inspired me and breathed new life into the art that I was doing. And just getting that feedback was very important. got a chance to meet a lot of people through that experience. I had some great collaborations. One of them was with Jude Gergen, who shot these beautiful drone shots of New York City at the height of the pandemic of an empty city overlaid on, on my first track from Zeros and Twos, and also reconnected with an old friend and producer, Asaf Spector, and we created a song together called Everything Changed. decided to play outside in the woods and do a recorded performance. That was the start of this partnership that led to my most recent album, Panic in Slow Motion. After we recorded a couple of songs and we did that performance in the woods, we realized that there's something special about connecting back to my rock and roll roots and combining modular synthesis and live instruments and that kind of punk rock, rock and roll attitude. started collaborating in the studio, we collaborated remotely, and it really inspired me to create. And so it kind of snowballed from there. I'm really excited that this album is, is coming out. I just released the vinyl version of it, and now we're working on putting it together as a live show. Panic in Slow Motion is very special for me because it's electronic music, but it's also raw and in the moment. My friends, Itai. Hello, Jano. How are you doing? It's so, I love seeing that, that documentary. I mean, first, it's so nicely done. But I really, like, we were here on all these performances, on all these moments, cheering you on, seeing you grow, seeing the project shape. The first rec, I mean, just the whole thing. It's so, it's so cool seeing it laid out like that. Um, yeah, I mean, well I do done. have to give credit. Thank you. And I have to give credit to, to Asaf Spector for, for really putting that together. Um, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't sure what he was cooking up when he was doing it. And by the way, uh, he, was, he was supposed to be here with me in the studio, uh, but he got sick. Uh, and so he, he couldn't make it, but he is in the chat. Uh, so kudos, uh, Asaf. For, uh, for, yeah, for putting that together. And as, as you saw, Jono, and probably some folks in the chat, uh, lots of those, <laughs> lots of those experiments and, and journeys have been shared with this, uh, with this show. So uh, it's, it's all part of it, right? It's, 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 we're all in this together in a way. Well, I mean, I, I hadn't planned to say this, but I will say it, that you've been part of this channel and this channel's growth. Uh, you know, some of these people know this since it's not since its inception but pretty pretty soon after you hit me up and you're like dude your logo is terrible i gotta help you with your logo and i was like finally somebody can give me some real feedback on this show <laughs> not just like it's great man you, you know said it i didn't say it. <laughs> no you were like your logo's terrible your colors are terrible your branding sucks yeah and well, you you hopped in and you've just like helped me this whole time so those of you that. who don't know, 
this is the other silent part of modular world right here your, your words not mine well but uh but yeah no it's been it's it, been an incredible it be kind of <laughs> it's uh it has been i mean it's been such an amazing venue right a digital venue throughout the pandemic and everything and look at us now with like you know i don't remember the last time that i even talked to somebody about like oh we need to wear masks and like it's you know it's pretty much over for now hopefully knock on wood um but uh but look at you know look at you look at this channel it's 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 here and it's thriving well we're not going to stop just because COVID is i can't say it's over i'm not sure i agree with you but i'll just I'll, i will agree to a point that we're in a new place maybe but yeah there there's no reason to stop this now because the the global community has spoken it's like people want to see these shows they show up they've told me as much um I and i touch on it yeah. a little bit you know it's it's this show and it's but it's all of the other communities as well whether Absolutely. it's the new york modular society colorado, or colorado or, and seattle and and everywhere else and i i know some of those folks and some of them i'm, I'm probably gonna still you know meet people uh all the time and uh it's it's an amazing community so and it's yeah. i think i touch on it a little bit on on the clip we just played but a lot of you know the music that i put out is this uh, is a result of this conversation it's a result yeah. of this dialogue between you know if, when i you know i post something on you know whether it's on this show or on my instagram or on youtube or somewhere else and you get certain reaction and a lot of times i'm surprised like oh this like that sketch that's that's something that yeah. that you liked yeah. uh and then that and it helps me kind of look at it from a different angle it's so true it's 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 different than likes on social and comments it's like these conversations are and the friendships have been really deep and meaningful i mean i i think about colorado and it's like what they do with us with socal here i mean they're just a totally sister sis, you know society for us um you mentioned asaf not being here and i i do want to shout out man i see you in the chat I really wish you were with us and I know that your contribution to that documentary, but also to the greater project is you will be seen in this show. Believe me, but we see you now. Thank you, sir. Um, okay. Let's get to it. Um, you're always in this great space. Tell us about the space you're in here. Um, so yeah, so I'm here in the studio. It's basically, I mean, I, uh, it's, it's funny. I, I, I just saw, what was it? Uh, two days ago, I saw this, uh, amazing rock show by the band, a band called Dive, D-I-I-V. Uh, if you don't know them, check them out. They're absolutely incredible. Um, you know, rock kind of straight up rock band. Um, but they, they made a point to kind of like say like how grateful they are for being a DIY band and having that kind of recognition. And, and it kind of made me think like it is a DIY space. Like, I see myself as a DIY artist and and everything that I put together um, in this studio is is in that spirit of kind of, yeah. you know, it's not a it's kind of like an expression of what I'm trying to make. And it's I use this space that I have in order to kind of like to express that. And um, yeah. and I'm, I'm fortunate that I have this kind of it's almost like a this staging area. Uh, the walls are all kind of stone and and so i can't even put anything on the wall so so everything's on the ground it's moving around every few weeks or months i change things up i move things around um and and it's really i've i'm i'm looking at it in a way as a digital stage because mm. it's a way to connect on online whether it's like a short little snippet on instagram or yeah. you know longer stuff like in on, on your channel or live streams i think that some of the coolest things are are and i don't know if they've if they've done it recently but uh, in particular the new york uh, modular society have have done these um live sets right where, where you actually play live uh, and i've done a bunch of those and and to me those are the most kind of exciting yeah. because anything can happen it's dangerous right? yeah yeah it's it's live and dangerous and it's yeah, yeah. it's even more dangerous because you're streaming there's the whole element of 
your Wi-Fi. Better, or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be streaming over Wi-Fi. Everybody do not stream over Wi-Fi. Do not That's do right. it. Yeah, yeah. Plug um, it in directly. You mentioned the DIY aesthetic, and that really does go hand in hand with your punk rock aesthetic that I know you and I really share and really yeah. love. So we get it. You're a punk rocker. Um, how, how did you get into modular in the first place? Right. Um, I had, I had no idea what modular was, uh, until I think 2017 or so. Mm -hmm. Um, never heard of it. I've seen obviously kind of some of the pictures like grainy pictures from right. the seventies. Um, but I was, you know, I, I was, it was, you know, I, I, I got this space. I come kind of like, uh, uh had the opportunity to just, to, to just bring in all my old, like, equipment and, and amps and guitars and drums and stuff in here. And I started experimenting and very quickly I felt like this is not going anywhere. Uh, because what am I doing with some like guitars and drums and in, in this space by myself? Um, and, and I tried to do some electronic stuff with a uh, drum machine uh, with some iPad apps. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've all tried them. There are some good ones. Uh, but it really made me think like, wow, this is, you know, it's so easy. And I think it's amazing that we have this democratization of music that you can actually download yeah. an app for five dollars, even 20 bucks and, and create this amazing music on an iPad or on yeah. an iPhone. Yeah. But on the other hand, it made me feel, wow, anybody else can have this same sound because they, you know, anybody can can shell out 20 bucks and get this amazing app. Yeah. And so I had this idea in my head, I can probably figure out how to build a drum machine. Because I actually, I went to, I went to look, like I went to this, like what's the like, mini brood or like all these like actual drum machines. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I was like, I, 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 I don't know. I just want my own drum machine. So, so I looked into how, like I, I knew theoretically you, you can take a, a sine wave and you can manipulate it and, and do all that stuff but i didn't know that you actually had like equipment to do that so that's how i discovered it and and you yeah. know as they say that i i fell into the rabbit hole it's scary isn't it <laughs> <laughs> it's like friends of mine getting into it i'm just like awesome welcome that's great and i'm thinking uh, like oh i'm so sorry i know i feel i feel that too i was like because uh, i've i've uh <laughs> A few of my friends have gone down this road, or and I'm like, yes, I'm, I, I, I love it that you're here, but right. I'm so, so, so I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, um, one of my first posts on Instagram when I was getting into it, I was at, uh, I was at Analog Haven, and I took a picture of me kind of posing by the big wall, and I was like, cool trip to the motherland or the mothership, and one of my friends wrote, you know, don't do it, run away, stop, and he emojied a bunch of dollar signs, and I was like, ha ha, idiot. And um, he's totally into it now. Totally, yeah. just into it, yeah. posting, getting modules, just doing it. It sucks you in. It sucks you, in. and and that's the thing. I, I really meant for it to be a drum machine in the beginning. Like I need a drummer. <laughs> I don't have a drummer. I I'll just, I'm make, just a, I'll make a drum drummer machine. out of wires and knobs, <laughs> and like, oh, it's not just a drummer yeah. anymore. It took over the whole band, right? It's so awesome. Oh God, now. Tell me about um, you and Asaf and how, how, how did you start playing together? So it's funny because our journey has been pretty long. I've known Asaf for many, many years um, since I moved to, to New York City, actually. Mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> and he's been a musician forever and I've been a musician forever. Uh, and we've always kept in touch and remained friends, but we never actually did anything as a kind of as, as a project. Uh, we've always been aware of each other's uh, projects and supported each other. And, mm -hmm. um, and only recently kind of, um, you know, and, and so I'm, I'm kind of north of the city, like upstate ish, New York. Uh, and he's, he's moved here even before me and, 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 and started the studio here. Um, and so it's kind of like when I started figuring this out he just gave me a call and was like hey uh we should do something and then the pandemic hit <laughs> and so we were we were um you know we're trying to figure out how how do we 
collaborate. And that's where that whole idea of like, oh, let's just play in the woods because we can't be indoors. Um, I think, I think a lot that of people he wanted... here saw that, but I got to say that I think that, I mean, you obviously were doing the big epic sound like before that video, but man, that was the thing. That was the one that I think really got a lot of people listening, you know? It was a spe like, I remember. It was really special. I sent you, because I was going to be on your show, and I sent you a, a recording of like a, a set on the show, like that I did in the studio. Yeah. And, and so you slotted me in and everything. And about a week before, I was like, hey, I might have something different. Right. Uh, if you're interested. Um, and I wasn't sure how it was going to come out. I, I thought it was 50 50 that it, it's, gonna, it's just going to be all garbage and we won't be able to do anything with it. Uh, but somehow, even though one of one of the stereo channels, the Rings channel, actually one of the plugs didn't actually plug. Because can you imagine in the fall with all the leaves and everything trying mm -hmm. to set this thing up before the sun goes down? Um, I don't know how we somehow pull it off. Well, with you like sent me that. Multiple extension cords. No, it's crazy. You guys sent me that video and I was like, this is going to absolutely be so loved. You know, I mean, people couldn't believe that. It was really cool. It, thank you. Yeah, no, I was, I was, uh, Drum it was, set outside. I love seeing all the love for it too. So kind of, yeah, thank you everybody for that. So yeah, it was, it was special. It was really hard to do. <laughs> it was right. really hard to pull off. Let's Obviously, because we haven't done it since. Well, it is hard. I mean, even dragging just a modular rig out, I've done that a lot. But taking a drum set out, all that stuff, multiple cameras. Yeah. yeah. And like you guys didn't have a big crew. It was just you and like one other. Yeah, we had um, also my friend Mike that came and he he, he did like a... Um, all the handheld stuff. Yeah. The handheld, right. which really helped. R really, really made it into a different thing. Those shots are beautiful too. Yeah. Um. Let's talk about this album because I do think that we should say that this is kind of like, I know you're having a proper album release party in New York with all our NIMS friends, but this, but this is kind, is of, kind like of like the, a, This is the digital release party this, in a this, way. This is kind of like an album release stream. Yeah. Sure. We might have branded it like that. That might have been a good idea. Anyway. Next album. So I just want to hold it up really quick. This is Panic in Slow Motion. Look at that. So awesome. All right. Um, talk, just talk to us a little bit about the making of the album and like, what was the hardest part of making it? Yeah. I mean, or the easiest part or the funnest. Well, part. the easiest part was like, Hey, we need to do this. Right. So uh, after, after that, sh that performance in the woods that Asaf and I did, we we're like, Oh man, we, we, we need to, to, to figure out how to do this and, and make a whole album out of it. Uh, that was clear. What was not clear is okay. Well, I guess how do we how do we actually do it? Is it going to work? Um, we knew that one song worked, so we looked at a few songs from a previous album. The original plan was let's do a, a remake in a way of the of the previous album uh, with like drums, modular, and and some other stuff. Um, and very quickly, I was like, oh, this feels like going backwards. I need to write more songs. Right. Um, and, and so <laughs> we thought we would do kind of like a three day session in his studio and that would be it. And we'll kind of figure it out. I remember and, that. Yeah. <laughs> and we went there and, and, uh, I brought my whole rig and everything. And I think that, yeah, there is some, some footage of that in the, in, in the clip you just showed, but, um, it was really exhausting. It was not like that performance in the woods, like just like, you know, one take and, uh, and we're done. It was now just, you get all serious and you're going to track right, and right. be all, yeah. Yeah. So it was really hard, but we got two tracks out of that. Uh, but then we started collaborating remotely. So the, the flow that, cause the first two album, like, uh, songs, um, we recorded live together, right? It's like, you know, just, let's just do it live and dangerous and all that. Right. It was like, okay, this, this is fine for a live show, but like, you know, for, for a proper album, let's, let's just come up with a different process. So I would actually record the songs live with like a vocal guide track that I would do live. Like I would write them, um, perform them in tracks like with the, you know, uh, all the, the tracks were individually recorded into the DAW. 
and with a guide track for the vocals. And then Asaf would like add instruments on top of that, like the drums and some guitars and some violins, even in some songs. Um, it's, you know, it, it, and, and it's funny because then he would send it back to me with like, oh my God, it sounds amazing. And I didn't even, I wouldn't even know what he would add to it. Um, and then I would, you know, kind of finish up with the, with the last kind of uh, the final vocals on that. Right, right. It's so cool. Um, so let's talk about um, down below. We have a link to order the vinyl. And as some of you know, um, I always release the audio from these shows to channel supporters. So if you want to support this channel through Patreon, the links are below or you can hit the join button and join on YouTube and you get downloads of the shows, right? All the exclusive stuff that's happening on these shows. But to those of you watching right now, if you order Itai's album during this show, you're going to get all the audio from this show also. So people who are watching this in the future, tomorrow, later today, I'm sorry. That offer is not forever. You are the lucky few who are watching right now. <laughs> and I would say like, yeah, you were holding it up. Like it's, it is a vinyl, which is only available uh, now until kind of for the next couple of weeks. And then everything's going to be available on digital. So uh, all the links for kind of Spotify and all that, feel free to click on that, follow, support. Um, yeah, this is, this is the, uh, record release official, but yeah, the vinyl, luckily somehow I got it early. <laughs> so I was able to just like, oh, okay. Vinyl is available. Well, this is that place in, um, where is it again? In yeah. Made in the Czech Republic. I'm Czech not going to disclose Thank all you. my, all my secrets of how to get a vinyl done quickly but yeah hit me up on, on on instagram or something well i mean there's multiple people who are like i'm doing a vinyl i've sent it in i'm not going to get it for like 18 months and i'm like i know 18 months we're going to be dead or or like who who gives a fuck about the record which I you know. made 18 months ago and you got Crazy. it in like weeks yeah check check republic hit up Itai if you're making vinyl this year um, okay, let's get back to some music. Um, we have two performance slots, and they're both just awesome. And they each have two tracks. So tell us about um, what we're going to hear on this uh, on this next block. So I think that the this uh, so this first block is going to have two live tracks that I recorded with uh, Asaf here right behind me uh, a few days ago. And the first track is called Panic in Slow Motion, the title track from, mm -hmm. from the album. Um, and, uh, and the second track, I believe, is um, Let It Glow, which I also debuted on your show, mm -hmm. um, you know, sans drums, right? right, that, right. Was, that was a while ago. Um, and so, so those are the first two tracks that we're gonna hear. And yeah, it's like, it's all live in the studio um and it's uh yeah i'm really actually really happy of how that came out so uh and and that's by the way we're gonna do a show like you mentioned we'll mention it later too we're gonna do an actual proper live show in august in brooklyn uh so that's that's i hope that's gonna be the same kind of setup that we're we're gonna do uh live at that at that venue as well oh my god thanks for flying me out for that show and offering to pay for first class and all that that's really nice of you to do that. He's, he's putting me up in this nice hotel and sushi and anything for you, Jono. Uh, I really wish I could be there. We'll have to talk about that. Okay. Uh, here we go. All right.
Oh, man. What a treat. Thanks. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Thanks. So yeah. Thanks for the kind words, everyone. Um, okay. So everyone always asks about the lights. So we know you created them. This isn't a kit. We saw you making them in the mini documentary. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've, I've always, I mean, one of the things that are really loved about, and I think everybody loves about modular is the, you know, blinking lights or, you know, every, like the cliche is like blinking lights and whatever. Right. Right. Um, and, and I, I've always had kind of like since, since I started tinkering with it, I, um, I really wanted to accentuate that part of it. And so I experimented with it and I, I kind of, I, you know, just my nature of wanting to hack things and, and do things up. Like I, I just created bigger and bigger lights. I started with a small little shoe box and then I went and I found this like round thing, right? Uh, like almost like a drum. Yeah. Yeah. I made those lights. It was like sort uh, of like a floor Tom size. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and I had that behind me for, 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 for a while. Um, and you know, people reacted to that. It was like, great. And especially when you put that, like kind of, you know, like I have here with the um, depth uh, effect that you kind of have them blurry in the background. I always thought that was cool. And then I think we talked about it maybe a year ago or so. I was like, you were like, I'm going like, to build a wall of lights. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you're nuts. Awesome. <laughs> I, I, cause I imagine that as like almost like this, you know, like a Marshall stack right amps of like these lights and that's right. actually the the dimensions i i took of like a marshall uh cabinet right and i i thought it was like well if i build it up build and, like and I, nine of them maybe yeah right it was <laughs> and i knew it was going to be a, a a tough project but it was um it was really hard and i had a lot of people actually help me uh i had my my old drummer uh liron uh, who has a studio in the in uh in brooklyn he actually constructed the, the boxes. The, so the boxes are, are wood and, and they have this like panel that can come off and it has like this, you know, uh, frosted plastic on it. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's been a, quite a project. And the thing is that they're completely CV, right? That you just plug a quarter inch into it and there are a couple knobs. Um, and actually there's, two, two inputs for each one. So you have the outside of it and you have the inside of it. Right, right. And so I have, so that's nine times two, that's 18. So I have 18 cables running out of my, uh, my modular rig into these lights. Um, and so I actually have a couple modules dedicated just to kind of control them. So I, I have one that's kind of a router so I can say, okay, the kick would go here or the, snare would go over there. Uh, and then I have also a, um, randomizer where I can just, you know, for all the, the outside lights for it to just kind of scatter it and, and tell it to go all, all kinds of places. So it's, it's completely, you know, I feel like it's part of the rig because it is also completely CV. There's no MIDI, there's no computers, there's nothing other than CV signal. Uh, so Asi says there will be 90 boxes at one point. That's right. That's right. We, when we when we take it to kind of Coachella or wherever, we're going to make a huge wall out of that. No, that's um, when you're going to be hiring a company to do like an LED wall and you can CV to certain parts of it. I don't know. DIY, man. Um Bad Machine, um, local friend here, Pac, asks, and this kind of segues into our next section. Mm, sure. He asks, how many songs can you play without repatching or do you have a set patch which you work within? So let me add to that. And we've talked about improv versus sequence. I know you like the Nerd Seek and a few other ones. So how much of it is pre-programmed versus improvised? And then how do you recall all these songs? Because like we saw in that last um, performance piece, um, I had said like, is there any way you can do it live? So you just go right into the next song and you know, they're not cut up and you're like, yes. So how are you going to do this live and keep the next yeah. patch going? And how does that work? So 
I think it is exactly that kind of balance between um, having things pre-programmed and being able to be recalled, which, which like you mentioned, the nerd sack is like, that's been my kind of godsend. Uh, I've tried all these different um, sequencers before, which work, you know, you can, you can, you have a bunch of different sequencers that have like recall capabilities. For me, NerdSec has two, two major things going for it. One, it works on a song level so you can have, and it's a tracker, right? If you're not familiar with it, it's like it's a tracker. So all the tracks kind of go down. It has, I think, six different modular outputs. So it, like CV outputs of mm -hmm. gate and, um, and, uh, and CV. So you can control both the kind of start and stop and the, the melody. Um, but more importantly, it has an SD card. So you don't need to freak out if you, you know, if something happens, you can just back it up. Um, right. and then you, so you can recall stuff, but, uh, you have to stop everything in order to recall. So that's where I think there's, you know, both for that reason and for the reason that to get things kind of keep, keep it feeling alive and not just like, let me press play and, and that's it. Right. Um, it plays along with other sequencers. So I, so I have the Rene V2 that does a lot of the work on mostly on, um, uh, on the rings, uh, which is being controlled also by the nerd sex. So all kinds mm -hmm. of different parts. So you can actually change the melodies and change the progressions. But then, you know, the, the, uh, Metropolis is ridiculous uh with you know doing all kinds of crazy stuff and you can control it live and play with it it's almost like this improvisational tool but also it has you know you can recall banks so i actually have these notes these handwritten notes like this color is for this song and this color for that song right. uh, so there's like three major sequencers the nerd seek metropolis i think there are five so there's the metropolis the renee the um xor nerd sec there's also the, um, what's it called, uh, Variegate 8 Plus, which is the drum sequencer, which most of the drums are usually from the nerd sack, but sometimes if I want to add like drums on the fly, I can use that. So I can actually program it on the fly and add stuff or add it, you know, if, if I stop the nerd sack and then I can just add like another beat going, so, so they share right. the, the patch cables. And then there's also the the voltage block, which is which is a CV sequencer. It's it's, it's not a CV like, sequencer, it, yeah. but it's still that creates a lot of that organic feel because yeah. it controls a lot of different things, a lot of sounds, mostly the drum sounds, but not only that you hear and and it's it kind of like makes it alive. So it's not this yeah. repetitive thing. Three three major or really with the. With the variegate, I would say that's four major sequencers and then one lesser CV sequencer. Yes, unbelievable. I would call it lesser. I mean, I would not lesser, but I mean, it's it's very simple, you know. It is. It's almost like you 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 could voltage do block that is wonderful. with like a like a wobble bug or or something like that, right? Or like, like mimetic. You, sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dude, you and I work so differently. Like, I have no sequencers. You have like four major ones. I mean, you and I both use voltage block, which is just like amazing. It's so playable and jammable. I mean, but it's, yeah, and it's part of the thing and a lot of, in, a, in my, my love for Modula is a lot about that kind of experimentation and, and mm -hmm. capturing a certain essence of it, mm -hmm. which is, you know, you do in an amazing way with kind of, um, What's it called? The crazy one that you use that's like this chaos theory one. The Benjolin? The Benjolin. And, you know, things that you like can barely control, right? You can barely contain them. You have this kind of uh, Benjolin's balance. Benjolin's easy. <laughs> for, you, for you, it is. I Benjolin's tried it. Easy. Oh, my God. I don't know what to do with it. Um, but then what... You know, because I'm a songwriter, I need a way for for it to then kind of to be able to to do it again, but not in a kind of let me just press play and this playback in a way right. that like feels like an instrument that right. like it's right. like when you grab a guitar. And by the way, I can play all these songs on a guitar, right? If you grab a guitar, you can you can just play it, and if it's a 
you know, might be tuned differently, might be a different guitar, might be a ukulele. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter. It's the same song. Right. It's the same approach where like, it's not going to sound exactly the same, uh, but it's going to be the same song. Um, two questions, and I think they work great with each other and what you're talking about right now. So one is from FX Music says, how do you keep all the sequencers in scale? And then Raverty asks, if you have that many sequencers, which sequencer are you using as your master clock? Or is it different for different patches? So let me answer the second question because I need an explanation for what you mean in scale. Um, so the master clock is, is the Pamela workout too. So I, it's not even connected to like, it's, I'm not, because if I'm going to use the nerd tech, for example, as the master clock, once I put, press stop, everything's going to stop. Right. So I need to have a separate master clock, which is Pamela. And when I record to a DAW, I actually use, uh, I have a, I forget, IntelliGIL, some sort of IntelliGIL MIDI converter from a MIDI clock from the computer mm -hmm. so that everything is synced up. And that goes into the Pamela, actually. So the Pamela is still the, the master clock mm -hmm. either way. Mm -hmm. And it's great because it has eight outs. So it just goes everywhere. Right. Okay. So I would think that scale, he's talking about, um, um, yeah, like how, you know, everybody is quantized and everybody's right. staying in tune. Right. Right. Okay. So like I mentioned, the, the Rene V2 has a really cool feature where you can control it via CV. You can control which bank and which, uh, which exact sequence, um, you are recalling because it does have a recall feature uh, which recalls a lot of the functions and the melody and the which notes you're using and all that stuff mm -hmm. um, but it has no screens right it's completely yeah. analog uh, but you can plug in with to, to a mod input there and send a cv so i so i basically it's a little bit of a shot in the dark like you, ju you just play around with the cv until you hit it but the, the the nerd sec can actually communicate with it that way to to sync up right so that's how you keep those in scale oh, i see and then everything else is notebook right i have i don't know the notebook is not right next to me but it's like i literally write down certain things like uh for this song the metropolis needs to be at the color pink uh and not green mm -hmm. right so it's it's a little bit of of uh prog programmatic plus you know, some, some chicken scratch. So in the breaks of songs, you're switching, um, song mode in nerd seek to the next track. You're going to exactly. Metropolis and between songs. I'm very busy. I'm like yeah. doing a lot of little things. Oh God. Switching BPM also on the Pamela. Right. Yeah. And that's why the Pamela actually just makes me anxious. Just even hearing that. I, there's not a lot of difference in, in the BPM in these songs, but sometimes I, re, I kind of like I have a, you know, from drop from 170 to 130. And, you know, I don't have it in this set, but sometimes I would keep like one of the sequencers going and it kind of like slowly just slow it down and mm -hmm. um, which is kind of makes it a part of it. And now I regret that I didn't do it. Mm hmm. Yeah, you really phoned these in, man. They don't sound awesome. They, they, it's OK, you know. Um, so, um, oh, in tune, wait, uh, quantized. Yeah. Well, yeah, I do use. So, so one note about the tuning of it, I have a guitar tuner connected to my mixer and I have like a Q output. So like before a performance, I would just tune everything as if I would a guitar, like, cause, cause all the analog stuff in particular would just be way out of tune every time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And remind me, which are those oscillators on the top row, which you love so much? That's the um, AJH that's mini mod. Right. So that's kind I of like never a model. Think of that. Yeah, the Model D replica, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, but very, very high end uh, circuits. So they stay in tune, not necessarily stay in tune, but they stay in tune uh, regardless of the octave, which is hard. Like the Mother 32, for example, does not do that very well. Right. Um, and so you can actually, you, you can kind of trust it. Once you, once it's heat up, like for, you know, you need to have it on for 30 minutes or so, 
and and then tune it once it's tuned and it's kind of you know unless you have like drastic changes in the temperature or humidity in the room um which could happen um then you can we can trust it to kind of be fairly solid i mean you know again that just makes me anxious just hearing that because sometimes it's like i've done shows where it's like you 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 don't have time to have all your shit on for half an hour you're yeah. up next you're pulling your stuff out you know no you j well you literally need to kind of connect it to the wall and even if it's still closed like just kind of warm it up kind of like have it on that's, for a while before that's you know, that's not always possible in different places yeah that's that's Freaking how it analog, is analog i mean analog oscillator people man yeah i don't have much of like there's between that and the uh and the dpo those are my main kind of analog uh, oscillators and most of the rest are, are dpo digital. doesn't need half an hour i don't know maybe the like, mother 32 does I mean, that's what they say, right? They say half hour. Half hour, man. Jeez. I think it's crazy. probably more like 10 to 15 minutes, but. Right. You know. Even that. DPO, I always thought tracked, tracked, you know, pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're getting lost here. We could talk about every oscillator in the world. Um, let's, uh, let's, 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 let's show the vinyl record again. If you've somehow joined so late that you didn't realize that this is Itai on the Spotlight series talking about his new album panic in slow motion unbelievable um people who are gonna buy the album during this show get audio from this show as part of the purchase i'm sorry if you're watching this afterwards that's that's not part of it and but, thanks for those who have already right I've that's for that's for channel here. supporters who already support this channel via patreon um or youtube channel membership you get all the audio from this show and all shows um okay what's next what do you have um planned for the summer what are you doing we know about the the album release show in in uh, new york yeah so the album release that? show in brooklyn that's going to be part of an evening with uh Mod new york modular society uh and that's that's actually a, a a double release um party with stokes as well uh so he's releasing an album as well and uh disney is going to play Kerble uh, Kerblansky, I, I can never pronounce Kerblamsky. it. Kerblamsky. Thank you, and sorry about that. Um, and I think I'm probably missing one more person. Hold on, now I have to like find it. Dissonant, you, Kerblamsky, and Stoke. Um, and Connected Sounds. Um, Stoke's, so Stoke's last album was that Schwemann project. Um, I wonder if he'll be dragging out Schwemann stuff again. He is so good. It's and yeah, no, it's going to be amazing because so we we got this place uh, called Gold Sounds in Brooklyn. Uh, so it's a proper like venue. Uh, it's it's indoors. It's like has a sound system. They have a you know a full uh, back line. So Aussie's going to come. A soft Spectre is going to come and, and play the drums, and and I'm, we're going to bring the lights. We're gonna I don't know how we're going to carry all the lights there, but. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll need to, to, to bring multiple vehicles. Um, you got to get roadies now. <laughs> DIY. But if, if you want to volunteer, uh, we always need help. Um, well, you're already and, flying me out first class. So it's the, the, the least I could do is carry like a, a, at least one. I th I'm going to send you a bicycle that you can ride over here. Oh. <laughs> um, so that's that's happening. Um, and then, you know, I'm talking to a few other folks about, you know, potentially having other shows around kind of either this area or others. So to so look out for kind of additional. We're going to um, just keep our lips that. sealed on that one. Yes. But, you know, big plans. So I'm hoping to play out more uh, this summer and fall. Um, so things are they're definitely in the works. And um, and yeah, and then also keep writing stuff and I, you know it's it's just always in motion these things so i'm gonna keep releasing things and and um playing either live or or virtually um gizmatron recommends to make the roadies dress the same okay you've seen uh, that like when i saw jack white play he like made right. them all come out 
dress like idiots actually, but maybe you could think of something. I I, I could. Well, I I do have my kind of uh, the uh, screen printed shirts that I'm you know also DIY by the way that I've been doing here from the studio. They could so definitely I wear your shirts. That. Well, the, the, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> maybe the leather jacket. Maybe send them all out wearing the the motorcycle bomber jackets. It might, might get a bit hot in New York in August in in New York. Yeah. Bomber jackets in in New York. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, we have one more per, um, per, performance block with two more tracks. Um, you want to set these up and tell us what we're going to be hearing? Uh, yeah. So the first uh, song of the two uh, two tracks of the next block is um, is called um, "Stop Making Sense." It is not a reference to Talking Heads. <laughs> it's not a cover. No. It is not a cover, um, but it's the first song off the album. Um, mm -hmm. So so that's that's the first. Uh, track and then the second track in this block uh, is um, Where Did We Go? which is actually um, kind of a re rendition. That's one of the only re renditions that Asaf and I created. Actually, that's from the first EP that, that I've created, and it's a uh, very different arrangement. Um, so, um, yeah, those are, those are the two tracks that we're going to hear next. Hey, um, on that note, Tell us about the the track that we opened with the show with, yeah. and then tell us about the track that I'm going to play as outro music because these are yeah. unreleased. These are these, these are, are yet unreleased. So um, the first track that you opened with is called "Listen to Time," and in a way, it's kind of an ode to this kind of modular community. Uh, it's it's about getting lost in the frequencies and the patch cables and and all the kind of the goodness that that modular brings so it's it's a bit of an ode to to the modular communities um i love and it. then and then the one that you're going to close up with is save the robots which in a way it relates to it a little bit is it's kind of a uh, nostalgic look of you know looking back at at uh and kind of more like the analog nature of, of us as, as humans and, and kind of, you know, reflecting on how, where we are now and kind of like this mm -hmm. very digital, mm -hmm. like kind of very scary kind of AI generation now. And now you're looking back at like, you know, analog and you're like, oh man, like, like that was, life was good when it like, it was just this simple machines, right? Where, where we are now, um, both of which are, are from, the the new album panic in slow motion uh and so yeah so it's 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 i feel like in this show we're, we're covering a, a lot of those yeah songs, but the ones that you're playing are are, are literally unreleased songs from the album that that are going to be released on july 9th great all right we're going to send you off now i'm going to um come back and do outro stuff and talk about what's coming up uh, in the summer for modular world so we are going to bid you adieu Thank you so much for having me, Jono. Thanks Always a pleasure. for doing this, man. Come on, this was really nice. Um, okay, my friends, Itai is going to leave us and we're going to uh, finish up with this block and then uh, I'll come back and talk about exciting summer stuff. All right? Thank you, my friend.
absolutely brilliant. Man, Itai, thank you so much for doing this show. Great, great, great friend of the show, Itai. And uh, Asaf, you were here in spirit even though you're sick. I know you're in the chat. I'm uh, glad to know you too, man. What a special series. We're going to do more of these coming up. And that said, let's talk about this summer. So um, the next show is going to be August 7, a spotlight on the amazing scene in Mexico. Um, I'm working with two rocket scientists, genius modular artists down in Mexico City and in Guadalajara. And we're producing a great show. I am taking July off. So I won't see you until August 7. Um, let's touch really quickly on channel support. Um, if you do choose to support Modular World and all my efforts on this show, I appreciate it. And I do want to thank uh, channel supporters who just signed up in the last week. Um, the show takes a lot of work and um, I do it for fun, but uh, I do appreciate the uh, support of you guys who want to uh, help it out. Thank you so much. Um, and a reminder that uh, patrons get audio downloads of this whole show. Um, as do people who are buying this record today during this show. People in the future watching this broadcast, I love you. Thanks for watching. But this is a one-off for this show. Um, yeah, thanks so much for being here on a Saturday. Usually this show's on Sundays. Um, I know Saturday's a little... Harder to watch, but it was the only day that worked with uh, with our scheduling. Um, San Diego people, we have Modular San Diego happening live tomorrow. Um, it's going to be great. Follow Modular San Diego on Instagram. And otherwise, my dear friends, I'll see you on August 7. We're going to close out um, credits music with um, a track called Save the Robots, which Itai talked about just a minute ago. And, um, yeah. Signing off, I'm John O. Wells. This is Modular World.